Hey, hey, everybody. It's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. And this is the Ripple Drop, the extended version. It came out a couple of days ago, but it ties in really nicely to an announcement that just came out in the last 24 hours. At the one minute seven mark of this two minute video, you'll find Chris Larson, the co-founder of Ripple, is talking about the regulatory clarity that's still missing in the US market right now. It's still too confusing. It's too inconsistent. And there's too many question marks. It's really hurting the innovation and it's hurting the funding for this innovation. And in some cases, people are even leaving the United States. So he cites that the Federal Reserve, the Treasury and FinCEN, all three need to work together. And everyone who is following the use case of XRP knows that this is the final hurdle for mass adoption. Once that happens, you can bet that all of the customers who can save money will utilize the digital asset XRP. On November 6th, we learned that Ripple has 300 customers using their technology in 45 countries and two dozen of them have signed on to use the on-demand liquidity. That's a seven time gain since the end of Q1 to the end of October. But I do think that if we get the clarity that they are working towards, we'll have a 10 time gain on top of the current number. So you can see here that the announcement I want to talk about actually came from the Blockchain Association. They are an entity that pushed through a unified voice regarding clear laws for blockchain. And they announced in the last 24 hours that they are pleased to add Ripple's Benjamin Melnicki, the head of regulatory affairs at Ripple for the Americas as a co-chair of the securities law working group. And he brings with him a lot of interesting experience. He just joined him two months ago. Prior to that, he was the Global Regulatory Council at Blockchain. He also was the Chief Compliance Officer at Noble Bank. He worked for Bank of America, and he also was the Assistant General Counsel for Cantor Fitzgerald. One thing I can tell you is with this current focus, along with the office that they just opened in Washington, D.C. to educate U.S lawmakers, they're going to get this job done. They are. And when they do, watch out because you're going to see mass adoption of XRP. Okay, there is another FUD article out there. This is by the Masari group. And Masari is actually um, founded by a guy named Ryan Salkis. He did a very, very sloppy job in this report. It had several inaccuracies. It claims that Ripple is operating a tax shelter. And it was a report that uh, is just so sloppy. It's unbelievable that companies like this actually charge money for their research. There was a reclassification that took place in the previous year. So the new figures for 2019 are on the way. They're going to be released and coming out in the following weeks. The report that he used uh, was the 990 form from physical year ending April 2018. So it was just really, really sloppy work. And in regards to finding out that his inaccuracies were there, he just tweeted, I'll look forward to publishing an update once the new 990 is available. That's all he said, no apology, nothing. Well, The Block wrote an article just a couple of days ago about Binance and their Shanghai office supposedly being shut down following visits by the authorities. Well, this turned out to be nothing but FUD and CZ is not going to stand by. He is going to hold them accountable he's going to sue them. So I think that people like Ryan need to be put on notice that their work is going to be held accountable. And I would be a little worried if this trend of suing those that print anything they want to print to damage reputations of companies could possibly end up in a lawsuit. So I am hoping this trend is followed. So I just want to show you, can you believe that they're going to charge you, Masari, $300 a year 
for some of their tools and their reports. No, thank you. So this guy has had some ax to grind. It sure seems personal to me. And it's such a shame because anytime you attack another project in the cryptocurrency space, you hurt everybody. And this is a tweet that came out in January of this year. And he was making fun of the Ripple partner that uses the digital asset XRP called Mercury FX. And they had just begun, but he wanted to make fun at just the small transaction that had occurred so, to that point, which was $3,522. Well, you can see that by March, just a couple of months after that tweet, Mercury FX CEO said they're sending tens of thousands of dollars weekly through XRapid. And we also have now an article that came out on November 22nd that talks about how they are discovering that Ripple provides them 100 times faster in terms of transaction times, and it's at a fraction of the cost. It was game changing for them. And the company started just with the Mexican peso and the US dollar, which before took three days to get a transfer done and $50 using their correspondent banking partners. With using on-demand liquidity, that correspondent banking partner just doesn't exist anymore. So those parked funds in those banking partners around the world don't have to be done. And the transactions now happen in seconds. And they said that they brought their fees to about $2. So this is something that is growing for them. They are now facilitating payments for the UK business that imports Mexican food. And in addition to the Philippines corridor, they are uh, going to open a new office in Dubai to help the migrant workers across the UAE send money back home. So that tweet is not aging well, Ryan. And oh gosh, it just doesn't end there. Just a couple of days ago, <laughs> we all learned that he has raised now $4 million for Masari to bring cryptocurrency information to traders. Oh, help us all. I tell you what, I just don't have any more words for this subject. Okay, Giant Gox, he is one of the really, um, great members of the XRP community here in Japan. I found that he uploaded a video that he took. I'm kind of in the way. He uploaded a video that he took at the Swell event, and it is a video that shows all the corridors that are open with the Ripple technology. And it's quite interesting, quite informative. I'll put a link to it in the description below. I think that you'll find there are a lot of corridors open. And I think when you see it in a visual graphic like this, it really gives you a clear picture of the coverage that is taking place. It's really pretty exciting. Okay, I am moving to an article that was written by Allison McCauley. She is the founder and CEO of Unblocked Future. She's a best-selling author and a frequent keynote speaker. She studies the intersection of human behavior and emerging technology. I think that is fascinating. She wrote an article for Forbes and it talks about um, about the discussion she had with Chris Larson at Berkeley Silicon Valley Innovation Week. And here are a few insights that she picked up on. Uh, let me just take you, That's this is the picture of the two of them chatting. So Chris Larson uh, talks about how you should ignore the experts and trust your gut. And number two, connect to hearts before you build. Number three, build, don't disrupt. Number four, cut the lifeboats. Now, what he means by that is he had a professor that actually gave him that advice, and I think it never left him. And then the fifth one was know when to replace yourself. And this just leads me into the fluff quite nicely. So I want to talk about the Bushido or the samurai code called Hikigiwa. And it is the aesthetic for how to live your life, which means the way to quit. And it is not 
quitting in a dishonorable way. It's quitting or moving or stepping aside in an honorable way. It's when you have reached all that you can do. And it's not just CEOs that this hikigiwa is important to embrace, but also for athletes when they come to the point in their career where they have reached their peak and they recognize that and they don't cling to their power or to their history because it's considered, especially for presidents of companies or those that have led a startup but need to move out of the way to go to the next phase, uh, it's considered very ugly to cling to that power. So that's why there is the concept of hikigiwa. And there is one sumo wrestler who doesn't have to embrace that yet. This is uh, Enno. And um, Enho is uh, my favorite wrestler. And this happened to be uh, tomorrow is the final day of the tournament. Today was very important because in order not to be demoted in the ranks, you have to at least have eight wins during a 14-day tournament. And I will show you in slow motion just quickly, because you can see how skillful he is with his techniques. I want to show you how he can bring wrestlers down that are that are double his size. So here is today's bout, and he gets low and curls him over. <laughs> really happy that he won today. So he has to win tomorrow again to get his eighth win, which is his Kachi Kochi. All right, everybody. Yeah, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.